Welcome EMS students. Today we're just going to do some basic pharmacology. This isn't a very comprehensive overview. We just want you to have a slight foundation and working knowledge of the medications. On the right side of the screen you can see that there's a, a list and basically what we'd like you to just have a general understanding of what these medications are used for. You know how much do we usually give uh, and then when we don't use them. So that's and then any type of side effects. So again, we're, we're classifying the use or indication, the dose, uh, how much we would give, uh, not use would be a contraindication, and then the side effects. <clears throat> so you, you can create your own list, something that's easy for you to um, study with and to get versatile at it. So. On the left side of the screen here, you can see uh, this, these, these are the common meds that I think EMT should be able to, to know about. Um, obviously, <clears throat> these are not medications usually that EMTs will be administering, but we still need to be able to know what they look like, know what they're used for, and when asked by your paramedic, be able to um, er, get them out and then maybe even set them up for the paramedic. So one of the first drugs we'll go over, these are two different respiratory drugs. Uh, you see this metered dose inhaler here. This is a self-administered uh, canister. The patient will take two puffs of this medication to help open up their bronchioles. This medication is a beta-2 beta two agonist. So it works on the smooth muscles in the respiratory tract with the bronchioles to loosen those muscles tight rain and constricting the bronchial wind passageway so it allows it to dilate to allow air to pass clearer and better. In some cases albuterol may be in something like this, a small fish kind of container uh, that uh, <clears throat> carries the liquid. You would tear off the top and then we would um, place this liquid in a small volumetric uh, nebulizer treatment a different medication which is similar, this is just in a, it's an aluminum package, is called ipropyl bromide or atrovent. Atrovent used in combination with at, uh, at albuterol, albuterol. Atrovent and albuterol is called a dual neb. And so if this is more of a, uh, <clears throat> it helps to dry up the secretions, uh, helps to work against the uh, <clears throat> parasympathetic side to allow that wind passageway to slowly dilate as well as dry up and stop swelling. <clears throat> so again, we use albuterol and atrovent for our respiratory uh, emergencies, mostly what's called bronchospasm. Uh, patients that have bronchospasm are asthma patients, uh, potentially chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD patients as well as your asthmatic patient. Now, <clears throat> there are many different other etiologies or causes of wheezing or bronchospasm. So just keep in mind that these medications may be useful or helpful. Uh, ask your paramedic. The next set of medication, this is epinephrine. Uh, you see the large EpiPen for self-administration. As an EMT, we should be able to, uh, again, <clears throat> coach and talk our patients through uh, the use of the EpiPen. Now uh, here you see a little vial and later I'll show you what's a preload or ampule. I'm sorry, this is an ampule uh, auto injector and this here is a vial. But this vial here is Defenhydramine or Benadryl. So in combination I put these two in together because we would use these for an allergic reaction. Epinephrine is a um, <clears throat> chemical that the adrenal gland, remember, uh, creates adrenaline. Uh, it'll increase the heart rate. It'll cause vasoconstriction. It'll cause um, <clears throat> the heart to beat faster, stronger. <clears throat> Again, it's alpha and beta receptors that it it's going to attach itself to. So. Alpha-2 is for your blood vessels to cause vasoconstriction. Beta-1 is for your cardiac muscle, myocardium. And beta-2 is for your lungs and bronchioles. 
Uh, we also give Benadryl a different hydramine, and Benadryl is an antihistamine. All right, so it, it blocks and stops the um, histamine release. The histamine release is what causes a lot of that uh, r swelling, redness, and puffiness. Next set of medications is called nitroglycerin. Here you have two different forms. There are many different forms of nitroglycerin. This is a nitroglycerin spray, and in here would be sublingual tablets. There's also patches, a uh, tube of paste that you'd place on the patient's chest, as well as a oral uh, preparation where they take this uh, with water and ingest it. And then there's also intravenous nitroglycerin. However, we're using this as a sublingual uh, spray or tablet that's placed under the tongue. Uh, the patient is to leave that there and not to swallow. This causes uh, dilation of the coronary arteries. So this is used for acute coronary syndromes, either angina, unstable angina, um, acute myocardial infarction, both the STEMI and non-STEMI. And we'd use this to cause the, myo uh, the coronary arteries to dilate so that we can get more um, blood flow and oxygen going to the myocardium. We would also administer uh, aspirin, a salicylic acid, so we give uh, two small chewable baby aspirin. Each one's 81 milligrams, and so we'd give 162 milligrams. So nitroglycerin and aspirin are usually given for your cardiac chest pain cases, or the ones that fall under acute coronary syndromes. Let's just ensure that when we give in the nitroglycerin, the blood pressure has to be um, above 100. What happens is that when we give this and it causes dilation of arteries and some vasodilation, what's going to happen is that if the container dilates, then the pressure or the volume is going to be displaced and the blood pressure drops. So we need to make sure we have an adequate pressure or the person will end up passing out. There are many other uh, side effects to this medication, such as headache, flushing, and feeling lightheaded. Again, we'll, we'll work with our medic and decide what, um, <clears throat> what's, what's the proper administration for this. All right, so the next one is uh, dextrose or glucose uh, that you see in the tube. That's the oral form. Uh, and the big blue box here is more of an injectable form. <clears throat> Patients may also carry a wafer that looks sort of like a sweet tart, but it's quite large, like a poker chip. Fast dissolving instant glucose that will raise the blood sugar. This is used, oral preparations, anything that they put in their mouth, they need to have a patent airway and a strong gag reflex so that they can swallow the medication and not aspirate it or choke on it. This medications, both the oral and the IV form of dextrose or glucose is used for a low blood sugar condition called hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. The next medication that we're going to review here is called naloxone or Narcan. This is an antidote, a reversal agent, a competitive antagonist for any type of narcotic. Uh, heroin, opiate, derivative type medication. This include things like uh, <clears throat> heroin, oxycontin, oxycodone, fentanyl. And in the cases of which uh, there are uh, different strains or concoctions or preparations of the fentanyl strain, such as carfentanyl, sufentanyl, which is extremely deadly, we may need to give heroic doses, which means that we'd be administering multiple doses of this narcotic antagonist, uh, competitive antagonist, Narcan and Narloxone, in order to reverse the effects of that opiate derivative side effects, which opiates cause respiratory depression, respiratory arrest, uh, pinpoint pupils, coma, uh, or unresponsive, so it works on the CNS, respiratory, 
and it can also blunt and slow the heart rate down so it's also cardiovascular depressants all depressing and this is a reversal agent what you see here on the end of this syringe is called an itemizer it's used to place into the nostril uh, we'd go ahead and give <coughs> Uh, half of a cc in one nostril, half of a cc in the other nostril and this has to sit in the mucosal lining in the nares in the nostril for it to be absorbed. Now Narcan can also be given IV, it can also be given IM. Again it's a reversal agent so what we need to be sure of is that if somebody is on chronic uh, opiate use for pain and the like you may cause immediate withdrawal symptoms. But again it's used to reverse the potent effects of opiates which causes respiratory depression and respiratory arrest, CNS depression and altered mental status to coma, as well as cardiovascular depression as in bradycardia and um, hypotension. So we saw this back in the first few slides. Uh, this drug is called epinephrine. We saw an auto-injector. We saw an ampule and this is epinephrine in a preload form this is a lot uh, a larger volume and what happens is that we'll give this via IV in cases of the patient that's in cardiac arrest again it's a beta 2 beta 1 and an alpha receptor uh, um, you know and it causes it goes for those receptors and it causes the increased heart rate it causes the strength and contractility of the heart to beat harder faster and stronger it also causes the blood vessels to constrict so vasoconstriction it also causes bronchial dilation so those bronchioles will open up and allow wind passageways to uh, receive oxygen and air better and in some cases, in conjunction um, with some <clears throat> cardiac arrest events or bradycardia more so, we're given a drug called atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate is a parasympathetic. It works on stopping the parasympathetic side. If we, we just kind of go and remember that epinephrine is a sympathomimetic. It mimics the sympathetic nervous system. We know that parasympathetic blocks or slows things down and atropine is that agent that tries to stop the parasympath uh, parasympathetic site from working. So it's a parasympatholytic. It blocks it. It's an antagonist. And again, we're using this purple box, atropine sulfate. Atropine is used for bradycardia. Okay, the last few drugs are some specialty drugs that we just want you to be aware of, we use these drugs to take over a patient's airway, to protect their airway, and then to provide a patent airway for them. These are paralytic and, and sedative, sedatives that we use um, to place a breathing tube or endotracheal tube to assist the patients in respiratory uh, status and help them ventilate. Uh, Etomidate is a medication that's used to sedate the patient. And then succinylcholine is used to then paralyze them in which it re uh, relaxes all muscles, then allowing us to easily instrument and place a breathing tube in. This is a very controlled event when this is done, and it's a really um, emergency event because the patient is unable to maintain their own ventilations or airway uh, in order to get the oxygen that they need. So a sedative and a paralytic. We also may be using uh, other medications such as Versed as a, a shorter, uh, the quicker acting, shorter lasting, quicker acting uh, sedative. And we may also be given a narcotic pain medications because patients won't be able to relate to us that they're feeling pain and that would be fentanyl, fentanyl. A few other drugs, these are called antidysrhythmics. Antidysrhythmics, they have different names, so it falls in this class of antidysrhythmic. It means that these are used for uh, irregularly slow or fast, irregularly wide. These are used for irregular heartbeats. And how we know this is that we're able to then determine and interpret their EKG rhythm from the EKG tracing. 
So again, so amiodarone is an antidysrhythmic. It's used primarily in our, our, our protocols for a ventricular rhythms. And we're going to be able to know several basic rhythms for you guys. And basic rhythm for this case is ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Amiodarone is used for ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. So when they ask you for amiodarone, it may be in a different color vial, but look for that drug. And it's going to be given for ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. The slightly smaller vial here is called adenosine. Adenosine is used for a narrow complex tachycardia called SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. So this is above. It's coming from the atria and is stimulating a faster heart rate than the body can compensate for. And we would use adenosine for supraventricular tachycardia. I'd like to congratulate you folks. Um, remember, we're going to have to study these documents and then take a look at your jug bags. Definitely pull the medications out. See how to set them up. Review them. Uh, challenge each other to try to find out like what is this used for? When will we use it? Uh, perhaps how much we might be administering? And then when we wouldn't use it? Again, I'm going to show you some of our respiratory drugs for bronchospasm. <clears throat> some of our drugs here for an allergic reaction. Drugs here, and we're missing our aspirin or salicylic acid used for your ACS, acute coronary syndromes. Bottom here is the PADI protocol or paralytics and sedation for assisting our intubation of patients that need an airway and need more ventilation. Start back up here at the top. Carbohydrate, glucose, uh, dextrose, used to bring up the blood sugar reading or your uh, blood glucose reading or your dex stick, uh, less than 70. And usually the persons are, our patients present with some altered mental status. Naloxone um, or Narcan, used to reverse opiate derivative side effects. Uh, here you have a preload of epinephrine used in the cardiac arrest setting. Here you have atropine, again, in a preload used for bradycardia. And then our other two antidepressants, at, uh, adenosine and amiodarone. Amiodarone is used for a ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. And adenosine is used for our supraventricular tachycardia. Again, congratulations. Study hard, guys. Good work.